The town of Mamaroneck has one. The village of Mamaroneck has one. Indeed, every other village in Westchester County has one. And now the village of Larchmont wants one. What are we talking about? a village administrator. Larchmont officials are here to discuss why. As always, we want you to join in the conversation. You can participate in this discussion by phone, email, or tweet us. Joining us this evening are Village of Larchmont Mayor Ann McAndrews and Trustee Lorraine Walsh. Now, Larchmont's a small village, about 6,000 residents, mm -hmm. one little over one square mile. That's, That's right. right. Why does it need an administrator? Life has gotten much more complex than it used to be. Uh, here we are, a small village. We have uh, the train tracks coming through. We have I-95 on a border. We have Route 1 going through it. Our population goes way up during the day. We have a budget. Uh, if you put our general fund, our library fund, and our water fund together, it's over $20 million. We have many employees. We have full fire and police. and. Because we are an older community, the infrastructure is getting older. We need continuity in our management of all of the assets that I was just talking about. So what do you mean about continuity what in management? Mean, what I mean is that I have a two-year term. Uh, Trustee Walsh, my friend Lorraine, has a, a two-year term. Uh, when we look at the kinds of assets that the village has, it's had its own water department. We have. 26 miles worth of roads. We have obviously roads and all the pipes that go underneath it. We have uh, lights, we have vehicles, we have buildings. Uh, what we need is continuity of management beyond a two-year term in order to handle the, the, the challenges uh, that, that we're faced with now. I mean, an example is, I mean, many of our capital projects take uh, up to 10 years from, from the first idea through the creation of bid documents, receiving bids, and, and the actual uh, project itself that takes place. And when you have a, a board where members are coming in and out, and you don't have that one sort of linchpin at the top um, who's managing, who's seen the project from beginning to end, you, you don't have that sense of continuity in the project. And I think that can be a problem, right. especially when you're dealing with very complicated issues that we deal with now. So who is, right now, who is responsible for, let's say, a long-term 10-year uh, project? Uh, I am, along okay. with the board. Mm -hmm. And we have these long-term projects right in front of us right now. We have our water pumps uh, that are going to be replaced. We, the bid docks are this thick. We have water tanks. We have, um, we have a, a new fuel tank going into our, um, our village yard. We have a generator going into the back of our, our uh, village hall. And Another important piece of all of this is that the funding for that uh, generator is a FEMA grant. So now we have who goes out and gets the grants and who administers the grants. When I first became a trustee in 2000, I think we had one grant in for about $125,000, which mm -hmm. today is, is, believe it or not, it's still to me a lot of money. But uh, when you're talking about projects of this size, this was about $125,000 <coughs> towards Flint Park. Flint Park was over $2 million. Uh, to administer these things and to go out and get them uh, is, is, is a job and a skill and it's a profession that, that is of itself. And that is actually relatively new that um, municipality management has become a specific career path, hasn't it, with well, a specific educational plan? I think, well, yes. Yeah, I think, I mean, the management, um, be because of the complexity of government today, and there's so many different regulations and oversights, that it's, it's become, that it, it's necessary that it's, that it's a profession in and yeah. of itself. Well, well, there are those who will criticize that it's adding another layer, and we're already mm -hmm. paying a mayor and trustees. Well, you're not paying you're not us paying much. Us. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, during Sandy, I remember after like a 16-hour day, I went out and had a ticket on my car. I <laughs> 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 a rookie policeman. I said, I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I kind of lifted it soaking wet off the windshield, I said, I think I know somebody. Uh, no, we don't, get a, we don't get a parking space. Uh, uh, we... we we enjoy what we're doing, we enjoy local government, and we wouldn't do this in, in, unless we had a passion for this kind of thing. And to make it very clear, <laughs> <laughs> we do not receive any payment. Trustees are Trustees not paid at all. Trustees and mayor are not paid at not all. Paid no health care, nothing. nothing. No we benefits, get... no pay. This is no so pension. This is nothing. This nothing. Is so this is volunteer. pure volunteerism. This is, yes. and, and the essence of, the, uh, of it is that each of us have 
uh, overlapping huge responsibilities for the government of the, of, of the village. But what that does, the way it's structured now, is that it eliminates a large portion of our village citizens in the ability to participate in our local government. Um, uh, I'm not sure I understand yeah, okay. that. Can what I mean that? is very, something very simple. This is a very time-consuming job. Uh, many of the people work for a living in our village, right. and very few of them could possibly give the kind of hours and hours and hours. See, it's hard to find somebody. other people to be mayor or you trustee. You betcha. And mm -hmm. what we have found is a few years ago, I, I was very involved in the League of Women Voters study to extend the term from two years to four years, just on the basis of this continuity. Uh, people won't commit to four years. Uh, that's so, a long time in our lives, our husbands' professional lives, and everybody's lives now. Uh, it, it, it's just <coughs> too much. Well, does so, the need for a village administrator have anything to do with the difficulty in finding people to volunteer? In other words, were these things that were in the past taken care of or run by volunteers? Yes, yes. Uh, it, will, it will free up uh, a large number, I think, of our citizens uh, from those day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day mundane duties of, of analyzing, for example, uh, the brakes on the garbage trucks. Okay? Aren't you now, an expert in that? I've become. <laughs> I've become, I'm for most unfortunately. Don't, don't talk to me about concrete. <laughs> okay. um, so w what I'm really saying is that now many more of our citizens will be able to say, you know, um, we're going to have a meeting once or twice a month. I'll be able to get a packet. I'll be able to discuss certain issues that have to do with overall policy and direction of the village. But I will not be tied down during the day in managing the assets of the village. Right. And this is opening up the political process to our citizens. And frankly, I think that's our strongest argument. Mm -hmm. Have people weighed in yet about this in the village? Some have. Yeah. We've had a few people who came to um, our last meeting where we uh, announced that we would be holding a public hearing at the upcoming board meeting. And let's just get that out there now. December 15th. Mm -hmm. um, at what the time? 8 o'clock. And we'll be presenting a draft of a local law which creates a position of administrator in the village. And you can and find a copy of that proposed law. On the villageoflarchmont.org website. Okay. <laughs> it's, okay. It's right there. And, and why is it that you need to, to pr make a law in order to do this? Because we're creating a position. Mm -hmm. Are, is every position, position in your, uh, is it in the laws? Uh, it has been a tradition with uh, local governments to create this position. Ours is uh, open-ended in many ways mm -hmm. on purpose because we want to see exactly how we can craft this job because we're crafting it according to the needs of the village. You know, right. exactly. We, we have compared uh, either what, about six or seven different statutes that have come out since 1980, the different, different governments, yep. Elmsford, Dobbs Ferry, Bronxville, Rybrook, uh, and now Tuckahoe, among others, uh, and, and seeing how they, they crafted their laws. And, and in your law, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't say whether it's a full or part-time position. Oh, it's going to be a full-time position. Is. Yeah. Yeah. A, and he will be an, he, excuse me, or, ah. she, oops, <laughs> or, she. or she will be a full-time employee of the village of, of Larchmore. Right. And it also doesn't provide for a salary. A particular salary. No, it says not, that they will not, be paid. not in the local law. Local yeah. law basically establishes the position and lays out the basic duties and the reporting structure, um, both who that person reports to and who reports to that person. And, that and who, who, do, who I was going to say, yeah. who do they report to? They the report board. to the board. Us. So it's important right. also to, to to let you know that there are two uh, sort of possible structures for this type of position, um, and one is a manager, um, and one is an administrator. And um, the general difference between the two is that the administ ad an administrator reports to the board and basically carries out the, the policy and the, uh, the programs and the mm -hmm. wishes of the board. Um, and, and a manager has many more um, res responsibilities in terms of hiring and firing of employees and things that rest with the board now. And you've we, decided to go with the administrator. The administrator. Absolutely. Right. Now, one of the things that I read from about like maybe a year and a half ago, was that the retirement of your prior clerk, Eileen Finn, has sort of opened up this position. Can you explain that? Right. We, we found in going into, into the weeds of this and other, other jurisdictions that uh, several jurisdictions have administrative clerks. They, they are both. 
Okay, and, and you can understand this. If the function is to pull everything together, everything in the village should go initially through the clerk's mm -hmm. office. Uh, okay. Well, there are, of course, exceptions. You don't go there for a plumbing permit, but you know what, right. I'm, what I'm talking about. The business, day-to-day -day business, would go through the clerk's office, and it's that kind of control that, uh, that, uh, that we want to see. We, one of the reasons for all of this is that we want to pull the village business together. You want one person to know everything that's going uh, well, on. Uh, at least try, oh, okay. and, 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 to, okay. and, and to have a cohesive, comprehensive, reasonable, uh, strategically planned form of government, and that's really what we're, what we're looking for. We've been very, very lucky uh, to have a series of, of, uh, of, of mayors and clerks and treasurers who have really been, been carrying the load, but things have gotten too complex uh, and too difficult to, ha to to put on top of all of these other duties that that, that, that are would it be looked yeah. at like a chief of staff position? Yeah. It's, it's it's somewhat absolutely. somewhat similar mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Somewhat similar to that, really is. Uh, uh, and and an example, a local example, would be Steve Altieri, who is the town administrator. Mm -hmm. He reports to the board. He takes his direction from the uh, from the board. And, and so we've learned, and he's been the one and only uh, administrator since about 1980 <laughs> right. of the town. Where are the funds coming from? Well, you mentioned the clerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the clerk has retired. Her salary's still in the budget. Uh, and that gives us a great buffer for this. Uh, how much we end up paying really depends upon uh, the quality of the people coming, what we need to get quality people, that all, the, the, the market is going to demand that. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a consultant in line uh, to help us with, uh, with, with these questions. Uh, and uh, uh, what I can tell you is that we have about $80,000 already in the budget right. because we have the clerk's, right. the clerk's salary. salary. So people aren't going to be looking at an increase in taxes just to fund an administrator. It's a replacement oh, position, it's, in a it's, sense. It's, in large measure, uh, 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 a replacement, but also it's a position whose aim is to increase the efficiency of the Well, of that the was government. the next thing I was actually going to get mm -hmm. to. Has there been, or can there be, a calculation of perhaps cost savings well, due to having an administrator? Uh, in many ways, yes, because uh, not only is the administrator the, the grant-getting person, or how, however we call them, yes. the chief grant chief grant writer, writer or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so many uh, government initiatives are framed in, um, in grant writing. I made a request just today when we found out about our new LED lamps being so expensive, I put out the call, where's a grant program that can help us with, the, with these additional costs? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way it operates now, and they are bears to administer. So what you need is to have someone who's able to bring, bring the money in and also administer it once it's here. I think, you know, you also, you have an, someone who's experienced at, at, at running a municipality, and they have connections, professional connections and through associations, and they, they know where to go to, to find out what's the best way to do certain things, what's the most efficient way, where do I get the best deal. They clue into these, oh, these ab situations and absolutely. opportunities. I don't that, talk. That we really can't. Yeah. You know, I don't, don't, I don't talk to elected officials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking to Steve Altieri uh, of the town, Chuck Strom of the, of the city of New, New Rochelle, Rochelle. Uh, Rich Slingeland of the village of, of, of Mamaroneck, because that's who does what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, and uh, I mentioned about consolidation before. Uh, well, what this is that about, actually that was not when we, that was before, okay, before we started. Before. Yeah. That was what, <laughs> the sharing services, and this is a perfect example of it. Well, I, when these fellows get together, the information really well, flows. Let's let's backtrack on that okay. one because uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a little conversation off camera before. Um, some people criticize the idea of getting an administrator and say, why don't you just fold the village of Larchmont into the town, sure. um, put them together for efficiency's sake. You've already got the administrator, and hmm. many of the services are already shared. Hmm. What do you say to that? Well, I say is that uh, sometimes those savings, uh, uh, some, sometimes a consolidation uh, does not mean the same level of, of service to the prior two parties. Uh, what we have found in looking, say, just to use our fire 
department, right. which is a perfect example of it. Let's say we consolidate with the town, with the town fire department. We'd still need to have a firehouse in the village of Larchmont, one side of I-95 and the right. train tracks. Mm -hmm. You would still have to have mm -hmm. the, the village, uh, excuse me, the town of Mamaroneck would still have to have its fire uh, apparatus up on at, at Weaver Street. So, and we do share services, it's called mutual aid. Every time there's a big fire, we all get together and right. fight it, and that's just, just and the you, way it and is. And you also have two separate, you have a village government and a town government, and it's very hard, I would assume, to share all. Well, we share a tremendous amount. We talked about uh, uh, joint sanitation. Mm -hmm. We're together in the library. The library. Mm -hmm. We have a library budget meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We share in the library. And we share in all sorts of, uh, uh, of, of cooperative ways. Right. I mentioned the garbage trucks. <clears throat> we, we now have the town uh, uh, taking care of the maintenance of the village's, town, uh, village's garbage trucks. And I think actually all that was a surprise that the village has its own trucks. Right. right. When you've right. got joint, joint sanitation. sanitation yeah. uh, brought out by, uh, believe it or not, insurance costs. But we mm -hmm. just reanalyzed that, and uh, that might not be forever. But we are always, always conscious of, of how we can share services, and that means also things like... Uh, the plow broke, you know. Right. We, we, we talk to each other all the time. The paving contracts. Oh, that's better. an important one. Yes, we got together with the uh, city of New Rochelle, mm -hmm. one of the Pelhams, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the town, <laughs> and the town. Um, uh, for a, uh, uh, went out to bid for mm -hmm. the asphalt for repaving streets, thereby, you know, decreasing the cost because of the volume. And, we so, uh, and so you had more bargaining power because exactly. it was a bigger job. Absolutely. And, and you think that having a dedicated paid person who could work with the, the New Rochelle, I don't know, manager or the right. town administrator would be helpful for them to work together and talk that, their that, language? That person There's is no going to have a lot more uh, time and opportunity and know-how to... to make those connections and to, to, to uh, build those relationships where sharing mm -hmm. is going to save us. We have, we have a big thing on the horizon or on, at least under, under the streets and we call it I&I &I, mm -hmm. and basically not to get too detailed about it but we're going to have tremendous repairs are, are becoming necessary in our uh, so, whole sewage system. Well we, we are in one district with the town and with uh, New Rochelle. In another, uh, in another. It, it, uh, you have two districts. No, we no. are in one district. Uh, the the town, the village of Lachmont is only in the New Rochelle sewage district. But <laughs> uh, consequently, we are all together looking at some considerable uh, repairs that have to be done to our sewage system in the future, and. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, and it takes a lot of management. As I said, that's not a two-year job. Okay. Right. That's right. an ongoing right. That's an ongoing uh, thing. Continue. We have to plan right. for the future mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'm at these meetings. Am I going to be here four years from now? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be here two years from now? And that so really creates important. a continuity. Yeah. Yeah. We are actually running out of time. I, okay. It goes well. quickly. But <laughs> let's just get to the next steps how people can be heard if they have an opinion on mm -hmm. this, because you've got a hearing coming up. We have a hearing on December 15th. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock at Village Hall, and they can come to the meeting and, uh, and have an opportunity to speak. They can also call the, the mayor or one mm -hmm. of the trustees. They can send an email. They can send a letter to Village Hall. Um, we will discuss the local law at that meeting, and we will most likely hold it over f to the following um, meeting in January. In January for, for, for a, you know, if necessary, a vote then, or if we find that there's too much, too many things going on uh, about it, and we haven't had uh, the time or the opportunity to really deliberate what we have heard, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll, we'll go another another month for it. But we have, this is all part of the this is deliberative the process, process right. and, mm -hmm. and we, want, uh, we want to thank you for making we're making yes, this available absolutely. to us so we can, uh, you know, speak to as many people as as possible. But uh, let us know your thoughts, both both pro and con. You know, the, so you hear that they want to hear what you have. Exactly. You want people to come to the meeting and say how they feel and tell us, you know, yeah. because there might be somebody who has a very valid point out there that you know we not, haven't we thought haven't of yet. considered. Exactly. So well, we want to thank both of you for joining us. We're, believe it or not, time goes very it quickly. Goes. <laughs> uh, Village of Larchmont Mayor Ann McAndrews and Trustee Lorraine Walsh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks. 
And if you keep watching, we'll be right back with more community stories in a moment.